Hey guys, I'm Mark Winchester from Winchester Metalworks. Today we're going to go over common troubleshooting issues you may encounter on aluminum. So one of the more common things that could happen that you automatically wouldn't think could happen is bad gas. It's happened to all of us. What happens when you have bad gas? Bad welds. So one of the tall tale signs that you have bad gas is the puddle does not want to move. What happens is the oxides will actually come to the top of the puddle and they'll float on top and the puddle will not want to move. It'll look gray and grainy and you'll have a little red haze around the outside of the, the weld. Um, that's a tall tale sign that you have bad gas. Most people don't know how to convey it, but atmosphere in the bottle, it's real common. Most fill stations, they'll just refill the bottle. So what happens is they keep doing that over and over and over, and then whatever contamination's in the bottom, they just keep putting good gas on top of the contaminated gas, and then sooner or later, that whole bottle is gonna be contaminated. Usually the big, even the mom and pop places, they, they understand it happens. You just go in, bring in the bottle, and say, hey, I have a contaminated bottle of gas, I'm welding aluminum. If they know anything about welding, you can't weld aluminum with bad gas. It just doesn't happen. You can get away with it on steel and stainless and stuff like that for the most part to a certain extent, but um, on aluminum, it does not like bad gas. So here's a sign that you have bad gas. If your welds resemble this at all, it's good chances you have bad gas. You have oxides floating in the puddle. The oxide cleaning line looks more like a haze than a definitive line. The weld's dirty, pretty good chance you have bad gas. So now we're gonna swap the bottle out to a good bottle. Same settings, same setup. We're gonna show you what good gas will look like with the same settings. So the main difference is obviously one weld's gonna be a lot cleaner than the other one. But the way it welds while you're welding it, it's gonna flow easier and, and the puddle's gonna be shiny. That's what you're looking for, a nice shiny puddle. So right away, looking at these two welds, you can definitively see a difference in the quality of the weld. So if you're getting welds that look like the bad gas weld, you potentially have a bottle of bad gas. So maintaining a proper arc length is important. Over the years, teaching people, I've seen people start out with good arc length and as they go, they gradually increase the arc length. And one of the reasons why they do this is because they want to be able to see the puddle. You don't actually have to see the puddle. You're just looking at the very front edge of the puddle when you're filling. That's all you really need to see. An ideal arc length is as tight as you can get it. A lot of people struggle with keeping a tight arc length. So an optimum arc length is probably anywhere from 1 16th to 3 32nd. You can get away with eighth inch at the most. So I'm gonna start out at a normal arc length. And as we go, I'm gonna increase it and show you the effects of changing the arc length. So when you pull back on the arc length, you're gonna widen the puddle. The puddle's gonna get hot, it's gonna get harder to control. So keeping a tight arc length, you're gonna have the heat input where you want it to be. As I pull the arc length back, you can see I'm starting to lose gas coverage and then I start losing control of the arc stability and the puddle starts wandering. So here I started out with a tight arc length and I slowly pulled back to demonstrate what happens when you start lifting the, the arc length up. The only thing I changed here between this weld and this weld is the, the arc length. Same settings, same setup, same gas CFH. I just changed the arc length so you could see the difference. So here I started with a, a tight arc length and I started pulling it up right around here and you can see the size of the weld changed and I started losing arc stability. And then here I pulled it up to where I started losing gas coverage. So next, let's talk about torch angle. One of the more common problems is your torch angle, leaning it over too far. So what happens when you lean the torch over too far, you're gonna start shooting the arc down the part. So when you go to introduce the filler, the filler is gonna melt before you ever get the filler to the puddle. So when welding aluminum, you don't wanna leave the, the filler wire lingering after you fill because what's gonna happen is the arc's gonna hit it and it's gonna preheat the filler, and then you're gonna lose that ability of, of the cooling when you introduce the filler. The difference between feeding the filler on stainless and titanium, stuff like that, and reactive metals, is you're gonna wanna leave the filler in the gas zone so you don't contaminate the filler. But on aluminum, since it's non-reactive, you can actually 
get the filler in there and get it away so you're not preheating the filler and you're able to use the filler as a cooling aid to keep control of the puddle. When you lean the, the torch over, you're, you're essentially having the arc it's gonna probably reach out all the way out to here. So when you go to introduce the filler all the way up here, you're gonna be, the arc's gonna be hitting the filler wire, which means it's gonna, it's gonna start preheating it and it's eventually gonna start melting before you ever get it to the puddle. And when you first start to see that the, the arc's hitting it, you can actually see the, the oxide cleaning turn the filler wire white. You can actually see it start hitting it. And then once it starts to heat up, you'll actually see it start to burn back. So here as we went, we started out with a correct torch angle and we slowly rotated back into an improper torch angle. And as we introduced the filler, the arc started hitting the filler and it started burning it back until it started dripping on there rather than creating a puddle, it dripped in there. So you can see here how it just dripped onto the plate. So here's an example of proper torch angle. You can see a nice crisp oxide cleaning line, which means that the torch was stood up proper so the arc was going directly into the plate. And you can see on this one, there's hardly any oxide cleaning line the oxides weren't getting burnt off properly because the torch angle wasn't proper. You can see all the contamination with improper gas coverage as well. Next, we're gonna talk about improper balance setup. Improper balance setting is probably one of the more common settings that people misunderstand. So if you have too much cleaning, you got too much heat coming back in the tungsten. So if your tungsten's balling up really quick, that means you have too much balance. So you gotta move the balance more towards penetration, so lower the number. This is my before tungsten. A sure sign that your balance setup is off is if your tungsten balls up and disappears like we just demonstrated. So when TIG welding aluminum, remember these tips because proper torch angle and arc length are really important to a proper weld. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Winchester with Winchester Metalworks. Weld mean, weld green.